Hello, I'm Patrick Orman, the AMGA instructor team member, and I'm here talking about how to place an ice screw. So first off, I want to find a good piece of ice. Should be well attached. I want to make sure it's not hollow behind. Um, and I'm looking for a depression or concavity as opposed to a bulge or convexity. So somewhere in this zone looks good, good ice, good quality. It's not over, overly aerated. And then we've got different lengths here. I have a 13, a 17, and a 21 centimeter screw. Notice that they all have the same length of threads on them. Most of the strength of our screws is coming from the pullout strength against the threads. So lengthwise, I'm basing what screw I pick off the thickness of the ice. And you know, I, a longer screw, if I need to get down through funky ice to get the better ice, I'll go with that. But otherwise, pretty similar in strength. So the next thing is the angle that we place the screw at. It used to be common to place the screws going down into the ice. Um, but what happens here is in a fall, that actually fractures the ice underneath the screw and then turns the screw into a large lever and breaks the screw. Um, so ideally, um, if you can go up, is strong. But what happens is people focus too much on getting an up angle. So really, the manufacturers recommend just going perpendicular to the angle of the ice. So I'm going to get that started. And as I'm screwing this in, I'm feeling the resistance. It should be pretty even here. I haven't hit any air pockets. If I do hit a small air pocket, and then uh, hit good ice beyond that. I'm usually okay with that. If I just hit a lot of air, then I know that my threads are not in the hole, are not engaged in the ice, and so I'm going to pull that out and find a different piece of ice to work with. So here I can screw that in until it's flush. Um, I don't want to drive past. Okay, and in this case with the hanger up, if I keep driving that. I'm going to strip the threads out and I'm going to lose the strength. So I'm going to back that off that half turn and then make sure to flip the lever up. <clears throat> if I leave the lever out and were to take a fall, that can damage the rope. So flip the lever up, clip your jaw in, and I'm ready to keep climbing. Okay, so I've climbed up. And I've got a high left tool here I'm going to place with my right hand. My right tool is placed as well, so if I do need to switch hands and shake out, I'm set to do that. To place my screw, I want to place it somewhere in mid-torso to hip range and in line with my body so that I can get behind it to help drive it in. <clears throat> So I get that thing set between my thumb and, and index finger, and I'm going to work a little starter hole, and then careful so I don't drop it. And then I can, if I get part way and want to shake out. Get that screwed all the way flush if I can without overdriving the screw. I don't want to strip the threads out. Clip my jaw on. And because I place this at waist level, it's really easy to clip the rope in. I don't have to lift it above my head. I'm set to keep climbing. Sometimes when you're climbing, you get to a piece of ice with a lot of existing holes. Rather than drill another one, I'll use one of those existing holes. And there's some important considerations with that. Uh, if I can put a longer screw into a shorter hole and hit fresh ice in the back, that's great. Um, if, one of, if the hole has started to uh, melt over and refreeze, so that as I screw the, 
the eye screw in. I'm feeling resistance, that's good. Um, I want to avoid really dry ice where the hole has sublimated and gotten larger. So let's see if I take my longer screw here and, and I can hit some fresh ice in one of these existing holes. So I do feel resistance and notice the screw isn't rattling around in the hole, so that's good. And So I'm okay with that one there. 